What's up, my beautiful birds? Beer Manic here with Wild Card Power Rankings. Now we're only doing the final 12 teams, so if you want, if you're interested in that, and you're interested in any of the playoff teams and where they rank, continue. If not, and you want to see the final power rankings of the year, they're basically identical to fucking last week because this week it was hard to tell who tried, who didn't. But New York barely showed up against New England, and it was just all god awful. Even though San Fran won again, so they'd probably jump. Probably if you look at the power rankings. Move San Fran up five and move everyone below them down one or so. And that's probably how it changes. At number 12, we have the Buffalo Bills with inconsistent coaching and that infamous Peterman decision looming as how they almost missed the playoffs and had to rely on the Bengals stunning the Ravens. One of the most inconsistent offenses in the postseason. It will be interesting to see how this team wins. If they do, I give them about a 12% chance to win this game against the Jaguars. Overall, I give them maybe like a 0.1% chance of winning the Super Bowl, but <laughs> we'll see how that goes. And at number 11, you have the Tennessee Titans inconsistency with Mariota in that offense. Don't know if DeMarco Murray is going to be 100%. I think that does factor in quite a bit. Something I forgot to mention when I was doing this before, so I had to restart. That offensive line for the Titans is incredible. Very, very talented group of young men. That defense is very capable. You got Delaney Walker at tight end, one of the most underrated tight ends in league history, I think, in my opinion. I don't think he gets the respect he deserves. But with that defense, Beard brings a dynamic that I haven't really seen with the Tennessee Titans before. I think they're capable of winning this game. I give them roughly a 30 something percent chance of winning this game. I think it just comes down to inconsistencies at quarterback. Then you have the Atlanta Chokers, Atlanta Falcons. I, I kid, guys, I kid. Atlanta Falcons at number 10. Now. With them, it's inconsistencies on offense and defense that concern me. They have potentially a great quarterback, but he's not a great quarterback because he's so inconsistent. Steve Sarkeesian, I believe, is the wrong guy for that offensive coordinator position. I think they should really, really look for a new guy who can actually put a playbook together and get Julio Jones involved every week. Because when you have so many yards and so many catches and you're the fastest to so many yards or so many catches or whatever, yet your coordinator is constantly making somehow game plans where you do not get the ball, and it's very inconsistent week to week. It's it's concerning. Tevin Coleman, Devontae Freeman can be a dynamic running back duo, so there is that, but the weak point for this 2017 Falcons is the defense. At number 9, we have the Kansas City Chiefs, whose weak point is also the defense, but they have a little bit more dynamic playmakers on offense and one of those differences being Travis Kelsey compared to Austin Hooper. Incredible difference, even though Hooper's not bad. You have Alex Smith, who is a lot more consistent than Matt Ryan. You have Tyreek Hill, if healthy, he can take the top off any defense, even at his height. Biggest weak spot here is that offensive line and the other receivers. But as the Chiefs kind of proved against the Patriots in Week 1, if they can do it again, is they don't necessarily need to get too many other people involved. The defense is coming around, but I still believe they miss Barry. But Peters is playing crazy, so got to give him some credit there. Other than that, the rest of the defense, I think, is playing a little sad. So definitely one of the bottom four teams for me. Doesn't mean I think they'll be eliminated, because obviously their opponent does rank lower. At number 8, we have the Carolina Panthers. The receivers are the major concern here. The defense is wildly inconsistent. Lost to the Falcons last week is concerning. I think the difference between these and the teams down below is quarterback play. I think Cam Newton is the probably one of the most dynamic quarterbacks in the league. He can run as well as any running back in the league, even as well as Ezekiel Elliott. He can throw pretty well. He can make the plays. Greg Olson is a really good tight end. That defense is a little concerning here just because, like I said, it lost to the Falcons when it kind of was fighting to win and it was trying and shit. There's no standout defensive player on that team to me besides Peppers and Davis. The Panthers can make a run for sure. As long as they play consistently on defense, they can do it. And you have the Eagles at number 7. Nick Foles, I don't think, is the quarterback to lead this team, and I think the play of Nick Foles is bad enough to where it's going to cause the Eagles to possibly one and done like last year's Cowboys. 
Now, if the Eagles are to make a run, it's going to be because their defense is really talented, really, really solid. With Chris Long and possibly one of the most most dominant defensive players I've seen in a long time, Fletcher Cox on that defensive line, it should be interesting to see. None of the wide receivers, though, scare me necessarily going into the playoff, especially when you have defenses like the Rams and the Vikings. And I don't think Foles can exploit them quite like Carson Wentz could have. If Carson Wentz was still at quarterback for the Eagles, I'd probably have him in top four, but... Yeah, quarterback play, man. So we got a quarterback play. At number six, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars. The best scoring defense, I think, in the league, or one of the best scoring defenses in the league. I think that changed after the Niners whooped on them. They lost to the Titans last week, but I don't know if there was any actual, like, effort in that game. Some people say that they were actually trying, which is kind of sad, but I don't think they were. Major... Major problem here is the lack of depth at wide receiver with no Robinson and I think no Hearns anymore. They're top or yeah, no Robinson, their number one wide receiver. It's gonna it's definitely hurt them this year. I'd hate to see what they could have done with him if Bortles would have been better. But, but for a three week stretch, Bortles was playing extremely good football, but he's no longer doing that. He's no longer playing as dynamic. He's back to plain old turnover Bortles. I can't think of a good nickname for him. That defense, though, could be what carries them to the Super Bowl if they make it. It's not definitely not going to be that offense. At number five, we have a team that I'm not going to say sunk by its own naiveness or whatever that word is, naivety. They have Sean McVay, a rookie coach, going into the playoffs for the first time, but he should be able to handle it. He's smart, makes great adjustments. But you have a great defense led by Wade Phillips, who has a ton of experience, so he should be able to get his players ready. Problem with me, though, is Jared Goff. I don't know how much I can trust him in the playoffs against elite defenses like the Vikings. I don't know if their defense, even with Aaron Donald, could shut down a Julio Jones. Could shut down a Kamara and Ingram duo or anything like that. It's not so much this is a bad team. I think this team has a very, very good shot at the Super Bowl. Very good. If Goff can even be good, like just good, they could make it very easily. If he's good or even borderline great, I think Rams are going to the Super Bowl. That's how close this is right here. These top five teams are all super close. At number four, we have the New Orleans Saints with the best running back duo I have probably ever seen in my life. Kamara and Ingram. One of the best young corners in the league with Lattimore. They have Drew Brees still at quarterback and Michael Thomas still at wide receiver. So no matter what, this team will always be a threat. I think what helps most is the experience from Sean McVay and Drew Brees I think they know how to handle the playoff pressure and they can coach those young guys up quite well and they could be the leaders they need to be I don't know if the Rams necessarily have that and I think that's what gives the Saints an advantage over the Rams for me I think it's that running back duo matches up decently well with almost any team with almost any team they'll face in the playoffs I apologize for that and it should be good to watch at number three, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. Injury concerns always hamper this team. I don't think they've made a playoff run this decade healthy, whether it be Bell or Brown or someone else. Disadvantage here, that defense without Shazier, it's been exposed quite a bit by quite a few teams. Granted, a lot of them couldn't pull it off, but when you go into games possibly looking like you're going to be facing the Jacksonville Jaguars, who... You surrendered five interceptions to the last time you met in, I believe, week five. It's it's very, very, very concerning. Especially considering your defense is going to have to stop Leonard Fournette and a uh, suddenly slightly better Blake Bortles. I don't know if they're capable of that, so it's kind of scary. It's basically that defense here that concerns me and makes me want to put them a little lower. But congrats to TJ Watt. Had a really good rookie season. I'll give him that. Joe Hayden playing well. Yeah, the Minnesota Vikings at number two. My favorites for the Super Bowl. I give them roughly a 30, 35% chance to win the NFC. No. I give them a 41.2% chance of winning the NFC right now. 
I think they're stacked on both offense and defense. They have the receivers, the corners, and the defensive line to win this. They have the running back duo to help ice the game, I guess you could say. McKinnon's a better receiver than he is a runner, in my opinion, but still, he's not a bad runner. Latavius Murray, a good power back. If this team had Dalvin Cook, they might be number one, which is incredible to say. Keenum, very underrated quarterback season. Very, very good. Well, I don't know if he'll be this good next year, but he's good this year. Then at number one, we have the New England Patriots, and... Just before I mention anything, if you mention Cheatriots or Bella Cheat, you will get instantly blocked. Show some respect for the competition. Just like I have. I never once mentioned Cam Newton crying or running off from a press conference like a little bitch. I never once mentioned the fact that the Panthers are benefiting from a person who got caught for cheating by using performance enhancing drugs. And are benefiting from his benefiting from steroids or whatever performance enhancing drug he took because he's still playing. And you can't tell you can't tell me for sure that he didn't benefit from that. Now with the Patriots, I think the major advantage here and why they're number one is to me coaching. Brady's have Brady had led the league in passing yards, even though for over the last few weeks it looks like he struggled vitally. I think a lot of that was due to the health of his receivers, though. Hogan's been hampered by injuries over the last couple months. All they had for a long stretch was Cooks, Amendola, and Dorsett, which is not an elite wide receiving core that you need. They have Gronk and Dwayne Allen, who is a good combo. Dwayne Allen is a better blocker than most people give him credit for, and Gronk is, prob is probably the best tight end in NFL history. I think not just for his mismatch when it comes to offense, but he's such a good blocking tight end that they don't even talk about it anymore. It's almost criminal. And then the addition of James Harrison late in the season, I think, solidified their need for an edge setter. He had two sacks against the Jets. I think he's a solid player. I think he'll get a, start getting a lot more snaps in the playoffs just because he has that experience. He can lead that young defense. With the experience of him and Devin McCourty, on the team, I think they'll be able to mentor people like Stefan Gilmore, who's never made it before, or people like Malcolm Brown, who have only been there a little while, or even people like Dietrich Wise, or Dietrich Wise, who, rookie, not playing very consistently, I think that's better for them. They have good coaching with Patricia and McDaniels, who are probably both going to leave at the end of the year for new co head coaching jobs. I'm hearing possibly to New York for McDaniels and to Detroit for Patricia or something like that. Should be interesting to see for sure. When you have Tom Brady at quarterback, you have Cooks on the outside with Hogan, who should be healthy. Then you have Malcolm Mitchell possibly coming back, and you have Gronk on offense with Deion Lewis, James White, and Burkhead all at running back. See, the importance of this and why... It's actually one of the most underrated skill position groups on the Patriots is with, let's say, I'll just throw one out, a Bell of Pittsburgh Steelers. When Bell's not in the game, you don't have to stack the box against the run, really, because you probably have confidence that they don't have anybody nearly as good as Bell as a backup and stuff like that. But with the Patriots, because Bell can catch, he can run, but nobody behind him really scares you like that but with the Patriots they have three running backs who can catch who can run who are all almost equally as good equally as agile speedy and powerful so when one gets tired another one steps in and is equally as capable when that guy gets tired either the first guy comes back in or the third guy comes in who's equally as capable it's one of the most balanced backfields I've seen in a long time especially for the Patriots considering I remember the Stephen Ridley days or the Ben Jarvis Green Ellis days where he would just constantly fumble <laughs> it was so annoying watching that now the offensive line I think is better than given credit for but not as good as a lot of Patriot fans think Solder has played well but his inconsistencies and penalties have killed some crucial plays I've seen him just 
let someone blow right by him and it just someone just nails Brady major weak point here for this team Thune on the offensive line I think is easily easily exploitable I think the Patriots do have some weakness in the secondary but if they can manage to get themselves in third and long and get that pass rush, I believe that secondary will step up a little bit. They have that bend but don't break mentality, and that is concerning for the playoffs because any football fan who will know, if you bend but you don't break, you get tested a lot, and eventually you will break. It's that simple. It works with anything. If you take a pen and you just keep bending it and bending it, adding a little bit more pressure, eventually it's going to snap. And I feel like this way for the defense. So they have to stop that bend but don't break mentality, get done, done more on third downs, and it should be a great playoffs this year with hopefully some more equal matchups because last year was just awful. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you next week in the divisional round.